hello. Welcome to Jazz After Dark. How you guys doing out there? Tonight, we are going to talk about how to hide money from the IRS. In particular, how to hide your Roth conversions from the IRS. Legally, by the way. Uh, President Biden is literally going to be right down the road from our office. Uh, and, and is probably right at this moment uh, while you're watching this. But um, it'll be tomorrow. But... Uh, so, you know, legally, I, I don't want to start no trouble. Uh, tonight, we're going with Clyde Mays. So Clyde Mays is, uh, I, you know, I had this a long time ago, actually at my 30th birthday party. We, we thought we would be fancy there. Uh, so we're going to enjoy this here tonight. First uh, turn into the bottle. And I uh, hope you guys are hanging out with me. You got something to drink as well, even if it's water. I hear some of you guys actually watch this on the way home from work, so... Maybe you're not, uh, you know, participating. Uh, maybe you are. I don't know. I, I don't judge. You got to do what you got to do. Be safe out there. Um, so can you hide money from the IRS? Uh, your conversions? You got to be tricky about it now. And uh, I'm going to give you some stats too. I'm not just going to be like a typical advisor here and go, well, there's a little trick. And it turns out it's not really a trick. Oh, Clyde Mays. So, that ain't bad. It's a little on the light side. Um, young, if I could sound like a snob for a second. It sound, it's almost like it could have stayed uh, cooking a little bit longer, as the people in Kentucky would say. Uh, it, it's okay. I would mix this with something uh, because it doesn't have a lot of punch. So, you could kind of lose it in some flavors if you like mixing it with a the, the simple syrup or in an old fashion, as I <laughs> typically go towards. Um, I, I, I would give that, I'd still give it a 75. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just personal preference there. So Clyde Mays, straight bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Um, yeah, you can hide money from the government. Uh, we're just going to be legal about it. So let's talk about it real quick. If you're going to do a conversion, you have between January and December 31st to do it. A conversion has to happen in the year that you want it to count for. You cannot go January through tax day and at some point say, well, I'd like to count it for last year like you can a deposit. You can deposit into your IRA and certainly convert it to a Roth, but it's going to count for the next or for that year that you do it in. So whatever the conversion date shows up there is what year it counts for. Common misconception. So since you have all year and since it's you know, early in the year, it's February, we know that we can convert any time. So I've said this before, but would you rather convert your account when the market's up or when the market's down, right? So when the market falls, I tend to make a big deal out of conversions because let's say you had $50,000 in your account and the market fell and it's down to $40,000. Well, we want to show the IRS the 40. We don't want to show them 50. However, people tend to want to convert when the market's doing well. And it's probably because they have extra cash. They want to pay the tax with the cash they have. When the market's not doing so well and we're hoarding cash, well, that's the best time to do it, but it's also the toughest. One other thing I want to point out, if you do a conversion today, or would be tomorrow, because it's, you know, it's nighttime. Um, if you did a conversion tomorrow, that would be in the first quarter. You would technically be supposed to es uh, estimate your tax due and pay it within that quarterly period. And you have until the 15th of the next quarter to do that. The 15th of the first month. So if it's January, February, March, right? You convert here in February, you have until April 15th to and pay your estimated tax. And there's a simple app, um, IRS, the number two, and go. Uh, one of our clients, Mike, actually told me about it, and uh, I had not looked it up. So uh, you can just do that and log in on your phone real quick and just make your estimated tax payment. But you're supposed to do that. Anyway, side topic. So if your account went from 50 to 40, we want to convert that. And you say, well, doesn't that silly? Because I got to sell the positions. I got to move them into the Roth and then I got to reinvest or figure out, you know, what if I miss some move in the market? Actually, no. Uh, I should say, no, you shouldn't have to do this. Not every brokerage firm will let you do this. 
But the technical term, if you want to call and ask them if you can do this, and of course we do this here at Jazz, so I'm not going to say this and then say, oh, sorry, we can't help you. The technical term is called journaling. So you would say, can I journal the conversion with the positions? Do you guys do journaling when it comes to Roth conversions? Sometimes they'll say, no, you have to sell positions, have the cash, and then convert. And the reason for that, by the way, is because they have to have an amount. So they need to, to essentially notate the exact amount that converted. Well, it's a bit of a pain if you don't sell your positions. If you sell everything and you have cash, well, we know how much cash you have. You move it to the Roth, and if it takes them three days to do the transfer or whatever, the conversion, the, the cash amount didn't change. Well, journaling says, uh, what if you had $50,000 in shares of uh, Tesla, and it had a rough year, and it's still working its way, and so now it's only worth forty. dollars Well, journaling would say, just pick up Tesla one day and just put it in the Roth, and whatever the value of it is, count that as the conversion. So... The first little step here is, well, yeah, we can hide money from the government that way because what's going to happen? Tesla will recover at some point or whatever position you have will eventually recover, but the IRS only sees that number that gets left in the dust, the 40000 We get back to fifty. I didn't have to pay tax on or $10,000. Get what I'm saying there? It went from fifty. If I converted there, all that's taxable. Value falls to forty. I convert then... Only 40 is taxable. Stock or position recovers back to 50. None of that is taxable, right? So that could be a big savings. How much is 10,000 extra dollars of ordinary income going to cost you? 22%, 24, as we're going with the, the bracket rate anyways. And so um, we certainly want to convert when the market's down. Now, how, how do we know how much is enough? If the market falls tomorrow, 2%, nah, it, that's a normal thing. Well, lately it's normal. So let's try some stuff here. Here is in our research site, of course, free to members, uh, or clients, I should say, and available to members if you would like to join us here, uh, jazzwealth.com forward slash research, and you can sign up for it. It's 30, uh, $13 a month, and all proceeds go to support uh, Drum Corps International, something that I enjoy supporting. So this is not like a profit center for us. We just kind of watch what you do and then build out new tools and stuff. Uh, so anyways, let's look at, I'm going to use the SPY so you guys can participate too. I'm not going to use anything fancy here. So SPY falling more than uh, five per, minus 5% over the course of a month. And we're going to look back 30 years. Is is that rare? That's all I'm curious about. Is it rare for the market to fall 5%? And if so, I just want to look at the data. If it's not rare, then I'd like to know, um, you know, is it a big deal, right? Because we're talking about doing conversions here. And so, uh, oh, I did it wrong. Uh, SPY, 5%, uh, and let's go. Yeah, that's it. Did I do it? Okay, well, let's go over here. There we go. So on the left, we're seeing every time the S and, uh, SPY has fallen more than five, negative 5% 5 in a given month. And this is just the month and the year that it did it. And then it shows what happened before that. So we can see if it was just part of a pullback or were we already weak. Some people like to dive into this. You could just highlight it all and throw it into a spreadsheet. And then we're showing what happened in the month after. So whatever you check here, by the way, if you check year, it's going to show the next year. If you check uh, day, it's going to show the next day. So the SPY has uh, completely lost 5% uh, over the course of one month, a total of 38 times in the last 30 years. Going forward, the average gain is small, just one month, uh, and it's positive 52% of the time. So that's not all that interesting. But remember, when you do a conversion, if you did it now, you just want to know that you did it so that by the end of the year, it was worthwhile, right? We have all year. So we're not saying like convert one day because the market tends to bounce the next day, right? That's silly. We're saying if you convert at any point throughout the year um, after a 5% drop, what was the performance like at the end of the year? So let's take it a step further here. So now I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to send this data to our forward lookup. And I'm not going to bother with all this other stuff here. I don't care what it does over the next day, month, six months, and all that. I care about the end of the year. When the SPY fell 
more than 5% over the course of a month, I want to know how it did going into the end of the year so that I can gauge whether a conversion after a 5% drop makes sense. So here we go. Uh, so if you did that, anytime the SPY falls more than 5%, by the end of the year, it averages a gain of 4.47%. Uh, it's positive 58% of the time, and then we give the minimum and the maximum, and of course, all the data in case you want to look through and, and itemize it. So is that a good deal? Is it? I mean, it doesn't seem like it. You'd say, well, maybe 5% is not enough. Uh, and lately, 5% is not really doing a whole lot. So we could just keep playing with it. And of course, you know, if you're a research member, you just, you have at it. Do whatever you want to look at. I would like to try one more. Um, I would like to know how often, if the SPY falls uh, more than 10% in a month. 5% happened 30 something times. So let's say 10% in a month. Is that odd or rare in any way? I'm sorry, you can't see. So here's every time that it did that. We've got a total of five times. So falling 10% in a given month is, is actually pretty rare. That might be asking too much. But if it happened, and look, it doesn't happen every year. Of course, it happened you know, through COVID and everything. And then through the financial crisis, the dot-com bust, and basically that's it. So this is asking too much, but hypothetically, uh, let's go here and let's take a look. If we waited and coincidentally had a 10% pullback in a month, we could always change that to two months or five months or whatever. What does it look like at the end of the year? Does it typically rally or is that pretty nasty? Now, because it's odd for it to fall 10%, oh, I wouldn't have thought it would have been good. Uh, I would have thought, hey, that's an odd event. It shocks people and they're not interested. Average gain, median gain, and 80% of the time. Now, remember, it's a small subset of data. So 80% seems impressive, but don't, don't let me steer you wrong here. Um, oh, and so every time besides one, it was positive. So there's one. That's not the best example, but if the S&P fell 10% in a month, that's going to sting a little bit because there's only five times it's happened and... COVID was one of them, so it takes a pretty monumental event to make that happen. But if, if let's say it happens, then I like those odds that I would have been better off doing the conversion on that drop than waiting any other point throughout the year. You see what we're doing there? I got an 80% chance of a recovery that's bigger than my loss. So if I had 50,000, I fell 10%, that's actually only 45,000, but now I do the conversion, there's a really good chance that I'm showing the IRS a lower number than what I would have had at any other point until we get to the end of the year. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. So um, now you can just keep playing with that. So this is not, this, this guy here is not for the traders all the time. This is a pretty cool thing you can do to save money on taxes, right? We're playing a different game. You could also do a rolling search, by the way. I won't bother you with it tonight, but uh, you could say, how often does the SPY fall more than 5% over the course of uh, three months, right? And so then you would do the same thing there. And then you could take that data and say, well, if 10% over a, a one-month period is odd, 10% over a three-month period, I bet you it's not all that odd. Actually, that did happen last year, actually. So that may be one you look at. Eh, if it's a rough quarter and the market sells off, yeah, I'd like to do that conversion. Maybe the data suggests that that makes sense. So bottom line is, uh, remember 2023, we are looking for that extra advantage, that extra bit of knowledge, that one extra little step that we can take. And I see you guys are listening. I've had more clients say, hey, Dustin, I've got a question on this or that. And then at the very end of the call, they go, is there anything extra that I could be doing to be more efficient? You guys are watching. I love it. So and the answer has been yes every time once they make me think about it, which is awesome. I, I needed that. So, um, w of course, we want to save where we can. And this is that extra step. How long did that take us? 14 minutes and a, a couple sips of Clyde Mays over here. Was that worth it to potentially save a 22% extra tax? Uh, you know, not your effective tax rate, but, you know, 22% uh, tax on maybe what bracket you're in, 24, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll do that all day long. Because on forty thousand dollars, that's uh, that's eight thousand dollars, or a little bit more, eighty four hundred dollars, eighty four hundred dollars, right? 
I'll tell you what, if you don't want to do it, I'll do it for you. I'll split the savings. How about that? <laughs> we'll make a deal. I'd do that all day long, man. I'd be sitting here just racking in the dough. All right. I appreciate you hanging out with us. If you want to join or participate or support the channel, uh, jazzwealth.com forward slash research. It would mean more to us if you decided to join us here at Jazz. If you're looking for a financial advisor or maybe just thought, you know, I don't know if I need one. I'm going to give these guys a test. It's okay if it doesn't work out. We're totally cool with it. You want to do it yourself and you want to really get into it. I'm okay with that too. But uh, hey, maybe give us a shot at Jazz Wealth. And uh, I wish you guys a great rest of your evening. And we'll be seeing you soon, right? <laughs>